All right, welcome back to another Unbridled Living in Costa Rica podcast. And today we have another Is That Legal episode with my co-host, Christina from Blue Zone Legal. Now today we're going to be talking about this kind of controversial topic. You know, it's been like, wait a minute, Costa Rica has been working on this new law about the driving privileges. Is it 90 days, 180 days? Did it pass? Did it not pass? Well, Christina knows the facts. So today, Christina is going to give us everything we need to know. Christina, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? Doing great. Man, I'm excited. You know, there's kind of a lot of chatter right now on YouTube uh, uh, and out there. So we I, we like to give you the facts, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So today, real quick, tell us. Did this new law, now for those people that don't know, because this can be confusing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, several months ago, maybe six or seven months ago, Costa Rica passed an awesome uh, new tourist visa law. Instead of 90 days, you get 180 days. That's awesome, right? However, yeah. you can yeah. get 180 days, practically everybody. Costa Rica is just giving it out because they want to encourage people to stay. Costa Rica is stepping mm -hmm. up their game. But... Unfortunately, the driving division, right, the traffic division, they were still like, you can only drive 90 days. Yeah. Everybody agrees that didn't make sense. I mean, that was crazy. But hey, you know, in Costa Rica, things work slow. But Costa Rica has been working on it. And it took a while because not only were they working on that, they were trying to make it better for all categories, which you're going to clarify for us, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Okay, so tell us, what's the deal? Did the law pass or not? Suspense. Suspense. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it did pass. Now, it passed, but did it really pass? When is it actually enforceable? Okay, now the government has 10 days for the presidential veto. So we should expect that within the next 10 business days, the president will sign the final text and it will be published on the official Gazette, La Gazeta. Okay, so the official Gazette, you know, is a publication where once a, a law is passed, if the president doesn't veto it, he's got 10 days to veto it. If he doesn't veto it, then it gets published in the national, in the, in the official Gazette, then it's enforceable. Is that right? Exactly. Exactly. So the important thing here is typically the law passes within 10 days. As long as it, nothing happens, it will get published. But within that 10 days, it's not enforceable. That tells me, wait a minute, Christina, my 90 <laughs> days is up tomorrow or within the next 10 days. Should I go ahead and stamp out of the country or not? Border run, my friend. Run, run, and do a border run. <laughs> run, run, Forrest, run. Okay, so I'm glad you <laughs> clarified that because a lot of people are getting this bad information. It passed, it passed. They're not going to do any more border runs, and for the next 10 days, they could get a ticket, thinking that they're legally in, but they're not. Exactly. And I will say, you know, let's be cautious, even more than 10 days, even after it is published, let's remember that the transit police is composed by people who may or may not be aware of the new law. So just be cautious, maybe bring a copy of the law in case they haven't seen it, you know, just, just in case. That's right. Because, hey, I know from personal experience <laughs> that, hey, uh, I was 100% legal. I still got a ticket for being over 90 days when I was a digital nomad visa. Hey, check out the video and the link up here so that you can see what happened and how I got a ticket being 100% legal because the traffic cop did not know the law, okay? But how you can avoid that. So I'm glad you brought that up, Christina. It's always to just... <laughs> It's better to be careful uh, and protect yourself because, hey, uh, a new law goes into effect. Not everybody knows about it, right? Exactly. Okay. So, so bottom line, 
almost everybody that comes into Costa Rica, they're going to get 180 days. Now they'll technically be able to drive for 180 days once everything is official. Okay, but how does that affect people that are getting their residency? Because at one time, you know, you could file all your paperwork for residency. You had the golden ticket, but regardless of the golden ticket, if you were going to drive, you still had to stamp out. What a pain. Did this law change that? It changes that, yes. So you just let me recap first and make sure that we are on the same page. So for tourists that are here, they may now get the new visa of 180 days. And now, thanks to the, well, now, soon enough, thanks to the change of approved in second debate on April 2nd, they will have driving privileges matching the visa, okay? So if they got 180 days, they can drive for 180 days. They got 110, they can drive for 110. Okay, that's amazing. What about the people who are in the process to get a residence, who are in tramite, for example, okay? In the past, as you were saying, they needed to do the border runs to stamp every 90 days and be able to drive. This changes. And for those who watched our previous video on, you know, the impact of the new law for uh, people in Tramite, we have four drop days. So in the final draft, what is what has been approved? The new rule is that if you are in Tramite, you can now immediately request a Costa Rican driver license. You do not have to wait until the end of the product, just until your residency is approved to be able to get a Costa Rican driver license. So you can now, as in, once you get your paper in, you have the plantilla confirming you're in tramite, you can just go ahead and even get the Costa Rican driver license before you get the Costa Rican ID. So this is a great news. Not only they don't need to, you know, leave the country every 90 days, but they can immediately have their first Costa Rican ID, the driver license. Wow, that's awesome. So, you know, uh, a lot of people, and I guess a, a lot of the expats that come, that piece of, that word that you're using is, it, it kind of refers to that golden ticket. It's proof that they've applied and, and everything's in process. And so now, if they've got that piece of paperwork, they can make an appointment, go to the driver's license place, get a Costa Rican license. Now, that's great. They don't have to get the Costa Rican license. They can continue to drive on their a uh, regular license, uh, but it just makes it way better for them to go ahead and get their Costa Rican license and be done with that because they need to do that once they get their official residency anyway, but now they can do it right now. Exactly. And, you know, it is easier for a transit cop to understand that you're driving legally if you have a Costa Rican driver license. You, they don't need to remember the, loo, the the rules of the transit law. They just see a valid Costa Rican ID and they're gonna be happy. And everyone is happy. Huge plus. You never have to worry about the transit cop giving you a ticket because you're pulling out the Costa Rican driver's license. He's waving you on through. Yay! Yeah, that, okay. <laughs> happy dance, right? And you don't need to carry your passport either. Wow. See, so when you, when Costa Rican driver's license, you won't need to carry your passport. Okay, that's awesome news. All right. No, Great no, news. The, this is my interpretation of the rules, right? They are brand new. So, and we will need to see how they are infor, implemented and, you know, understood by the, the people who will need to enforce them. But that's my interpretation. So we covered the tourists, the tourists that are coming here. We covered the people that are in process of getting their residency. So even those that are already in process, uh, they'll get grandfathered into the new law. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. So, all right. So that covers the majority of the people. What about the digital nomads? Has anything changed okay. for them? Yes, it has. So, and here I would like to give my point of view and make it clear that I want to see how the transit uh, police uh, interprets this because it's not, the new rules are not clear. Okay, step back. 
what were the rules before this new change that has have been approved? The law for digital nomad, that the law that established that they can get a one-year visa, open a bank account here, and work remotely from Costa Rica without paying the income tax on the income they generate. This same law also established that they were able to legally drive with their foreign driver license for the entire length of their visa without needing to homologate, meaning, you know, validate their foreign license, you know, just by showing proofs that they had the idea is digital nomad under the law, they should have been able to drive legally. Now, the final draft of the, of the new rules for the driving privileges does not have a specific sentence on digital nomad. And these changes, you know, there have been multiple versions, but this final one doesn't mention them. It only says that people who have a legal status in the country and this may be interpreted as included digital nomads, they can now validate, homologate their foreign driver license without needing to wait 90 days. In the past, once you got your residency, you had to wait 90 days before being able to get the Costa Rican driver license. The new rules eliminated the 90 days requirement, but the new rule may be interpreted as if they also apply to digital nomads. So now if I were a digital nomad, I will, for my mental health, I will just get a Costa Rican driver license. And actually I will get it immediately when I submit the paperwork because I can. So when I'm in tramite, then I just get my Costa Rican driver license and I'm good. Fantastic. So it did change it a little bit for the digital nomad. So the best thing for him, because I was a digital nomad, I was legally in the country. I still got a ticket because the traffic cop didn't know. So with this new law, I could go get a driver's license, Costa Rican driver's license. I would not have that problem in the future. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So that covers, I think, pretty much anybody. Is there anybody else that this new law would affect? Well, any person waiting for a resolution from immigration, including those who are changing category or renewing their category, they can all legally drive until they receive the, the resolution from immigration. Okay. So that's really great news. Costa Rica is stepping up their game. They're really giving us uh, all this great uh, stuff to make it easier for foreigners to come to the country. Now, yeah. Let's move into just a couple of uh, some, I guess, some Costa Rica driving tips. Because, you know, Costa Rica, um, I realized really quick when I came down here, it wasn't anything like where I came from. Now, maybe if I lived in New York or Jersey, you know, I hear those places kind of like crazy driving. Well, maybe Costa Rica is the same. I don't know. But, uh, hey, here's some questions that a lot of people have asked on my channel. And maybe you can help answer this question from a from a woman's perspective. You know, if you're driving in Costa Rica, what is the most uh, what's what's the most important thing you should have with you at all times when you're driving in Costa Rica, as a as a foreigner? Patience. <laughs> That's the big one. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But what if you get stopped? I mean, you know, I, I, I hear it all the time that, that, you know, if you get stopped, you better have these two documents with you. What two documents are we supposed to always have with us when we're driving? Okay. If you're driving as a tourist, you need your passport and you need your foreign driver license. Okay. So my passport, my foreign driver's license, in the event I get stopped, I should always have that with me. Well, I hear a lot of times, there's a lot of information on the internet that, hey, you don't need to have your passport. Just take a picture of your passport. Have a picture at the front, picture of your last time. Is that legal? No. I mean, you can be fine depending on the cop that stops you. They may accept a simple copy, but in most cases, they will not. Oh, there's so much misinformation and 
you know, even when you watch this video, we are giving information today, it may change tomorrow. Just reconfirm everything, okay? I'm also very cautious when I give information. And it's very hard because there's so much information out there and misinformation out there is very confusing. Sometimes I spend more time, you know, saying, you know, commenting on misinformation out there than giving information. That is very frustrating for me. It is frustrating. So the important thing is if you're driving, make sure you always have your passport, your physical passport and your driver's yeah. license. Well, uh, you know, just for the folks that haven't come here, in your opinion, where you live at, because I know I live in a lot of rural areas, what are most of the roads like in Costa Rica? Um, dangerous. <laughs> Well, I mean, as you know, I live in Nozara and paved roads are not common in the area. So cows on the roads are very common and horses on the roads are very common. And motorcycle, uh, there are so many Costa Rican that drive motorcycle. They don't wear the helmet that they should and they just drive in the middle of the road. So when you see someone on a bike, on a motorcycle, please be very careful. Don't assume that they know what you're doing. Just, just be careful when you pass them, keep a very good safety distance and yeah. Absolutely. Cause Even when you go, when, when I heard about, you know, what's the autopista like, you know, I was expecting uh, an autostrada. Uh, sorry, the, what's the translation in English of autopista? The, uh, it's the it's the fast lane. Yes, exactly. You know, you think I think it's like the twenty seven route. That's the biggest road in Costa Rica, and for someone from the U.S. or Europe or other more developed country, probably that's that's hilarious. You know, it's, you're like, what really is this the autopista? Because whenever I came from from Louisiana, you know, uh, I'm looking at, at information and I'm like, OK, we're going to where's the main highway? Where's the main highway? Where's the main? I'm on the main highway and it's just the a main little highway, two lane road. road with not with no shoulder. So it's very yeah. different in Costa Rica. It's not nearly as developed. So those are things that you need to keep 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 out for, or, you know, keep a you know, look out because the majority of the roads. They do have blacktop roads, but there's way, way more gravel roads, boulder roads, than there are blacktop roads. The majority of the blacktop roads have a lot of potholes in them. So, it, like you said, it's dangerous. But, uh, and, and, you know, you said earlier, you know, what are some things that you need to watch out for when driving in Costa Rica? Well, there's, there's a lot of livestock. There's free range cattle. There's, mm -hmm. It's not uncommon that somebody on a horse or a bicycle is herding their cows on the main highway at the, at the worst time of the day, you know, when there's a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. So those are things that you got to look out for when you're driving in Costa Rica. So one other real quick question. So uh, if you were, what would you advise a new tourist, a tourist that's never been to Costa Rica before, what kind of advice would you give them about driving at night or driving at night and in the rain? Be very, very careful. Visibility is awful. There are not many public lights on the roads. So it is really, really dangerous to drive when it's raining at night. And Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, in the United States, we're used to so many reflectors. You know, the, the stripes yeah. on the road are clear and painted. And so many roads, the paint is faded. There's no reflectors. So it can be very dangerous. Not all of Costa Rica, but... You know, no. there is a lot of dangerous places. So if you're brand new in Costa Rica, hey, try and try to avoid driving at night. And if you have to drive at night, be very, very careful. So, Christina, this is uh, some great information. And look, folks, uh, Christina is the best attorney I know in Costa Rica. If you want to get more information, you have questions for Christina, make sure you check the link in the description below where you can download a PDF so that you can get all of her information. She has an amazing team at Blue Zone Legal and offices. She can help you no matter where you are in Costa Rica. So, hey, Christina, it's been fun to have another Is That Legal podcast with you. I can't wait to do it again.
Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very kind and I'm here and I look forward for the next episode. All right, we'll see you next time.